Hi, welcome to This Is It, today's episode of Extreme Narcissism TV, The Inebriation Nation. What I want to talk about today is you know, paintings and art and stuff that I did. So I'm just going to treat this episode like a, I, I thought I could make a slideshow and narrate over top of it. That would be just as fine. But for whatever reason, I like to do it all in one. So no image of me today, well, I guess that's when I had more meat on my bones. Uh, there, that's more recent, but still old. All these paintings are old, and uh, we'll go back. We'll start here. Um, I want to talk about paintings in general. Uh, troubles, dilemmas I have gone through as an artist, as it were. I can pretty much do all those things, painting, writing, sculpting, drawing. I've been able to make money with them, if that's any kind of validation. So here, I'll, you know, sort of do what I can to substantiate, um, you know, I can hold a paintbrush, and underneath that paintbrush I can draw, I can sculpt stuff. I'll probably do, this isn't just about me boast, this isn't, this isn't at all about me boasting of anything. I want to talk about, uh, well, I kind of want to talk about conflicts with art, uh, or what's art, or what qualifies, how are thoughts and sensibilities about what is art and what it's for and what it does and what do we do with it. So I'm going to have like a series of paintings videos because I have a pretty decent career as a hack painter. And um, I'm just starting to wonder, no, that is not an ex-girlfriend. Uh, but I was thinking, I think there's some ex-girlfriends in here. These are, this is some portrait work. And... um this first guy I kept showing here before, that was a homeless dude. I know I was not some asshole that exploited people. That's just who that was. I, you can see here maybe I had sort of a impressionistic streak in me, or sort of that's what came out when I kind of just let it rip with a paintbrush. I could draw, I could paint, I could do fine, high detail watercolor work. I mean, I was no Andrew Wyeth, but I, I knew who he was. And I would just spend hours working on one painting and watercolors, just, you know, building up the layers like a renaissance master, you know, but with watercolor instead of oils. You know, starting out with like a brown or an ochre or whatever, and then building up the layers of watercolors and adding, you know, whatever colors I wanted to on top. Uh, but uh, then when I started painting with acrylics and just said, I want to paint big now, and I did. And I also thought it was an easy way to make money. I saw people really cleaning up on eBay by selling paintings of strangers to other strangers. So I got in on that. And I have a whole history which I'm saving. I did all these weird, I'll call them my scat paintings, which isn't in here. I have this, this is going to be my occult painting series, I'll call it. But I'm throwing some portraits in anyway. This is just me sort of chopping through. That guy was a janitor guy. Um, I don't think he spoke English. Um, but I liked painting people. I, I, I got this from Van Gogh whom I was always conflicted about, which is important and pertinent to this episode. I was conflicted about Van Gogh because it was with that artist I recognized through reading about him that there was a program uh, through, you know, like, well, here's what was happening at the time of Van Gogh and a lot of other famous artists who were around at the same time. Uh, there was a thing put in printed books, ephemera, the printing press. There was trade with other nations like never before there was industrialization happening there was prints from Asia influencing European artists there was uh, different kinds of drugs the opium trade came over absence all absinthe if you're still watching this all these things that artists talk about it's all in there it's all in the soup of the time when Van Gogh's alive one of the things that's in there is a couple people wrote about, or maybe it was just one specific book, I can't remember the title of the specific one anymore, but there was sort of a movement in the air of artists at the time, as you are well aware, that to be an artist, you must be tortured and suffer. And it carries on through a long time. You must live life and taste and experience suffering and all these things. Now, I don't know if that just came from, like, the first translations of Eastern, uh, like, Buddhism and that kind of stuff, or the a different kind of suffering from, you know, a Christian suffering, or if it was just, I don't know, it was just a book, a social engineering thing, early days, because uh, of printed press, people had more access to information. There was no internet back then, there was no TV, there was no radio, but there was a distribution in Europe 
amongst all these artists that would do impressionistic, expressionistic, and so on and so forth till we're going into Picasso and cu Cubism and all that stuff. There were artists influenced by the idea of being mentally anguished. So we have Edward Munch. We have all those guys who went off to islands to be pedophiles. I won't even, you know, I, I, don't, I forget who those guys, I forget the names of those guys, I don't want to confuse them. But then you have all these other art movements which are just like deconstruction of art. You can see the degradation of art. You know, like you can pinpoint it specifically with guys like Van Gogh. And Van Gogh was heralded, I went to his museum, it was impressive in Amsterdam. To see his artwork really did have a, I was like, whoa, like there's a power in art. I've been to the Louvre, all that, and grateful to have been, you know, been able to see those, go to those places and see those things. But I was still sort of, I wasn't disappointed in, there's something, there's some kind of resonant quality actually being in the presence of Van Gogh, Van Gogh, however, his work. But that being said, another thing in being in the presence of his work, and I'm not getting into metaphysics or, you know, emotionalism or anything, but it is disturbing. He's, he's mentally disturbed. I mean, uh, you know, there's been enough data and research and psychological profiling of people with, you know, the images that, and the artwork they created to prove it that there's a pattern here. And, and, and Van Gogh was mental and he had some kind of breakdown. And God only, there was all this, like, you know, Van, Van Gogh's friends, Van Gogh's friends, they were killing themselves. He has paintings of his dead friends in caskets. He has crushes on old ladies, old washerwomen and shit like that. And He's hanging out with prostitutes. They probably had syphilis. You know, Picasso's in the background there, same times. He's doing his thing. But um, I like something about Van Gogh. There was an emotional quality that came through. I like the looseness. So I thought I could be a, a Van Gogh, Van Gogh expressionist hack. Now we're getting into some of the occult stuff. But let's, since we're still talking about him, we'll stay back here. So we had... <clears throat> this was a... I can't remember who the hell she was, but... I painted a pic, this is MySpace stuff, I painted a picture of her, she painted a picture of me, I think she was married or something, she was very pretty, this picture doesn't do her justice, but I thought, this is one of my first hack paintings, I did so, I have like 20 plus years of all this kind of stuff, illustration, paintings, watercolor, sculpture, stand up, I, I opened mics in 1999, all, you know, all, all so many things, N international non-profit organization, my, a lot of my uh, philosophy on life that I had kind of made for myself was that I didn't want to work hard to make, to get the peanuts left over while somebody else got rich. I thought I'd rather be broke and work and do whatever I had to to get by or to get the things I wanted or my relative level of comfort or status in the world. But I wanted to do it at all costs without making some other guy rich where I just get what's left over as a pittance that I can't really get by on. I thought if I can't really get by, let me try and develop my talents and abilities, which is what I'd rather be doing anyway, and do stuff like this, like hack paintings that I started to sell in the early days of YouTube. I was there for the early days of YouTube, and um, I watched people make a lot of money through paintings. Nobody ever asked me to do an article, but I did good. And the thing about the way I could paint was that I was fast. And the more I did these fast paintings and tried to make them good, actually kind of the better I got at it. And I'm not saying my stuff's that great, but it, this looks terrible. <laughs> but the, um, I did, I would say, just by painting so much that Malcolm Gladwell, I don't like really like him, but that Malcolm Gladwell thing of like you put the hours in, you'll get better at a thing. Well, that's just obvious. You don't need Malcolm Gladwell to tell you that. If you, you keep doing it, well, you can keep doing a thing over and over again and just be bad and never get better. There's plenty of art like that where, where people don't even try to develop a draftsmanship or anything. But at least, you know, I was developing it and my toss-off scraps were good enough to get rid of on eBay. So I called it my $10 an hour job, my 24 hour an hour, dollar job. But I did paint portraits. I got so good that I could do it fast and I would sit down and do like, you know, 50 bucks at different kinds of fairs and markets and all those places that smell like wood and AC more and paint and, you know, acrylic paint and stuff like that. I would sit and I would do paintings, you know, or sometimes people just leave me a photo. Here's some of my more occult stuff. But I realized I could sell this stuff too. I could do with eBay. There was a market for like monster art and creepy shit. Some of this stuff is, is a couple of these things are actually production art. I don't know. I'm just going to go all over the place with this episode. A couple of these things, not yet. A couple of these things are production art. 
um, for stuff like, I don't know if you're aware of this, but a lot of stuff they do artwork for, but the movie, the project, whatever it is, never gets made. They just make some art to say, hey, uh, you want to pay for this thing? And then nobody ever sees it. And since you sign a non-disclosure form, you can't talk about it. And then you just make a whole bunch of stuff that if you don't catalog it, uh, you don't have any record of it yourself because it never sees the light of day. You know, unless you work on some kind of famous thing, they don't show your concept art in a book. You know what I mean? So I don't have that even. But I did do a couple things. This is a weird, <laughs> weird portrait, right? <clears throat> That's somebody. <clears throat> There's more to it. I, uh, but again, I did so much work. This is like 20 plus years of stuff of not just painting, illustration stuff. Oh yeah, this is, uh, um, again, just some kind of weird... I sold it. Everything you see here, all this artwork was sold. I mean, a couple of them may have been gifts. Oh, that one. That one, people bid on that one. Yeah, I can see the red light. Um, uh, yeah, this was the, the, you know, you know exactly what it is. All that Japanese J-horror stuff came out into the U.S. with Shara Michelle Butterfingers and all that stuff. And uh, I just did a bunch of paintings like this. The, got better at my skill level painting stuff. I, you know, I, it's hack work. Everything you see here is hack work. Now, my new work I'm not showing yet. I want to have enough of it. This was production art for some. This is production art for a movie that never got made. It was neat. They wanted to make a little. Uh, they wanted to make this. Like people were looking. Like what the hell is this? It was an alleyway, and there was like going to be CGI flies flying around. So all these little specks and dots were supposed to be flies, and these are the people's legs that are like, what is this thing? And it was about parallel dimensions and all that kind of stuff that's really popular now. Um. And this is just a cropping of a thing that I liked how the eye detail came in. Again, what happened in movements in art? Expressionism, cubism, everything Picasso did about breaking art. These were, sorry to say, I know you're going to hate hearing this. You're going to say bullshit, but it's true. And it's substantiated. There's evidence. There's lots of like, oh my God, they spit in our faces. But yeah, there was a deliberate concerted effort to degrade art to get people to not, to, to, to degrade, to, to sort of shape man, this is social engineering stuff that I have to get into now, but I'm going to, it's my show, to degrade man, they wanted people to create art like everything I'm showing you, like, you know, to, and people say, oh no, there's some, there's some nice stuff in there maybe, Scott, don't be so hard on yourself, no, there really isn't, I, I was duped, I was fooled my whole life, it's a really hard pill to swallow, I need to, to I need to train myself. That's why my art's different now. I'm not saying I'm not going to keep it loose and expressionistic. I'll take the best of the breakdown of art. I mean, basically, if you think about it, a lot of what you see is like the, the great, you know, Picasso stuff and expressionist. It's all just broken down stuff. It's all like the studies of paintings and like, let's stop there. But since they understand competition, and you got to understand about art too, I mean, since they understand composition rather, since they understood composition and there was a great competition between different artists and schools of a different way to approach a, what I'll call a math to art, which doesn't, does involve measurement, which is a way you can train your eye to see, but is a way that you can go back in and measure. It does involve the golden mean, and schools hold on to it. There was a guy who died recently, Myron Barnstone. He was one of the guys in America. I mean, there's more guys, but he was one of the guys that sort of, he was a dick, and he kind of closely guarded his, he understood sort of the math of drawing well that applies to painting and everything else. And he would teach it, but he, he didn't really teach it well, and he wasn't really a good teacher in my opinion. But he died recently, and he had those tools, and art, established artists who were already famous and could paint and draw would go back to him and spend like, you know, like two or three grand and just sit there and just try and figure out what he was th kind of throwing at you. He had a weird way of teaching. I, 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 I I, I think I could teach what he taught better, but I left him. I just couldn't stand a guy long enough to get good to stay with him. But yes, there are secrets to art. There is sort of an alchemy to art that, yeah, how about this guy, right? There is sort of an alchemy to art that I did not um, fully possess and grasp. And I met multiple people that, 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 you know, I met one person who was a nice lady. I just lived too far away. Yeah, I give you some idea of scale of some of my more occult stuff. Yeah, very Crowley, very ge early Giger, right? 
Yeah, I know all the bullshit artists. That's a portrait. That's my version of a blue boy. It's shit art. You can see this. But the thing was, this was just me never really doing oils or acrylics before. And using eBay as my testing ground to do these canvases. A lot of these are 18 by 24. Whatever the cheapest, biggest canvases I could get. The art schools would throw stuff away. So let me let me move around on this one. This is another one of my uh, yokai paintings, my little Japanese j horror things. I got a decent amount for this. So all these paintings, I sold all of them. They're all out there, like in the world. Like I don't know. I mean, I do know who owns them. I I, I collect, cataloged all the addresses and stuff, but I don't know who's really there. But look at the garbage. This is all. The, look at all the shit I painted. Um, because it was. It's all hack work. It's all like. Um, I sold all of these. I'm not saying, ha ha, look at me. I tricked people. I kind of feel guilt about it. But it also, I'm like, I, I recommend it for artists, young developing artists, because um, this one's just like a Dragon Ball Z inspired. I'll, I'll, when I do the next slide, you'll see there's more to it than that. But anyway, I knew that this kind of thing would sell. I was just looking at the juxtaposed scene, and the, which is all full of CalArt students and stuff like that. And I'm like, Okay, I get in there with some of my sensibilities, do my thing. And, you know, I sold this. This one was a bigger one. Yeah, I made the eye a little crooked and shit. And and I, I think I called it Super Saiyan or something like that. I got rid of it. I'll go back to the close-up on it. The detail. Um, of course, I'm shooting this off of the monitor. So I'm, I'm really degrading the quality of my art. I focused on having colors at weird spots that pop. And it's something I do well. And I've retained it even into... The stuff I'm doing now that nobody's seen yet, but my work now is definitely more optimistic. It's not a cult like any like some of the stuff we didn't get there yet. But my I get I get I do a weird occult shit. I'm just saving that till later. It's just gonna pop up in the slideshow eventually. Here's another portrait. Again, people on eBay will buy portraits of other strangers. I have gallery shows. I ship stuff all over the country to different shows, you know, group shows or whatever. I had a solo show. My stuff that was pretty cool. You know, the first time you ever have that, that's really, it's awesome. Uh, me, me, me. I didn't know what to do with myself. I was awkward. I showed up late to it. But I, I stayed. I was like, I had to stay for the whole thing. Um, everybody calls this a Steve Buscemi painting. But again, stuff like this. I don't know where they hang it up. College dorm rooms. Oh, I happen to know that for a fact. I actually got ripped off. When I first started doing, like, hack paintings, not portraits, I did, like, weird cartoon stuff and... It's whole other videos I'm going to do. I better save my... I won't talk about that then. Let's talk about this stuff. So, uh, sorry for stopping there. But yeah, I have more art episodes to do. Again, here we go. Some occult stuff, right? And here, again, another portrait. This was a big one. Somebody... Some, I sold that one. That was... I sold that one on a show. Um, close up on that. This was me learning how to paint and just trying stuff out. And I thought, well, I'm trying stuff out and I have enough of a skill level. I think I can put it on eBay. But I'll tell you what, even if you don't have much of a skill level at all, do stuff and put it on eBay if you think you can sell it. I was surprised at what sells. I've watched artists. I'm not going to name names. Maybe I should, but I'm not going to. Um, people just making a living. I watched them just like stay in, just stay in the saddle and just keep making art, keep getting better. And putting all of it, every sketch, every scrap, everything on eBay. Treating everything they did like it was some kind of masterpiece. Even though it was just crude and uninformed and whatever. And just kept going. And you can watch people's... I watch people's talent develop, you know, selling paintings on eBay. I don't sell paintings on eBay anymore. There's better ways to do it to get more money. Uh, I think I'm probably going to sell art again. But I'll probably just make YouTube commercials to a page where you can just buy my stuff off of my website. Because I used to be a one-man factory of art, which I can not talk about that a little bit. But I'm going to do an episode about that. Like I said before, I think I swiped the idea from an episode of Juxtapose magazine. Which at the time I didn't realize was just like another, another way to, to degrade the fine arts. Uh, in terms of painting and drawing and that kind of stuff. By, by making like, you know, no disrespect to Ron English. But he was doing like, he did, Ron English was an artist who went and who was a talented draftsman who would go to and bomb billboards in the 1980s and 90s in New York and get arrested and, and get in trouble all the time for like exposing um, corporate 
sponsors exposing corporate ads for what they were and the pro you know like that they were propaganda tools and stuff like that and 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 he got arrested for all the time he would cover billboards and stuff he had crews and 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 then he became thrown into this juxtaposed world where he'd do like Ronald McDonald the Last Supper with Charlie Brown and Heathcliff and Garfield and and you know everybody but Jesus and it was painted in this really you know like pop art style but like also informed and in frame, informed with uh, draftsmanship and you know actual training in art and understanding of composition and color and all that stuff that I don't have. <laughs> Maybe I can't do it, but I have enough. I was enough of a scammer to get into those places to get something. So that's what I offer to you. I say these things, and this is my perspective on art. But anyway, art as a cultural tool, sold it. These aren't very good paintings. You can see that. And like I said, shooting them through a video camera is totally degrading the quality of the color. I got something going with color. I know that with my work and I think that's what sells it. When people get my paintings in person, they're usually more impressed. There's my shadow over Innsmouth type person. Doesn't she look like she came right out of there? One of those fish people from HP Lovecraft. One of those brave new world people. Is she gonna be is this gonna be is she gonna be in Titan? Or is she just uh an inf uh what do I want to say? An Atlantean Puritan. A Puritanical Atlantean. She looks like, a, you know, or is just Amish woman. I forget who this is. This is somebody. But um, I did so many of these. I said I used it to get better. I would just use anything. I remember in the early days of MySpace, I, I would ask people, hey, I want to do a painting of this. Can I just use it? And then I stopped. I thought, I'm just going to take whoever it is that I paint and transform them into something entirely unrecognizable. So, uh, again, this was my idea of like a gnome or elf or a fairy. Like if you saw a thing like, well, if you saw something like that, what would you see? And I went more the way that, I used Rembrandt's palette. This is me just trying to use Rembrandt's palette and make fairy paintings. So I think I sold this one as a fairy painting. I didn't get nearly as much as I should have. I should have kept this one. I would have kept this one for myself, but I'm glad I have an image of it. This painting looked pretty cool. And it's weird for me to say it about my own stuff because... Real artists are like, you're always like pushing, so you're never really satisfied. Like, the best thing's always the newest thing. And then there's some highlights maybe in the past where one part of a painting you liked. But your best thing's always, the, the, the best thing's always the newest thing. And the worst thing is, is fucking everything else. You know, and, and even your newest thing, you can, you know, like, what I learned about being an artist that'll pass on to other artists that are still here. Don't point out your flaws in paintings to anyone. If it's your teacher, let your teacher point it out first, and then, if you have a teacher for art, let your teacher point it out first. I did a bunch of these like weird Pepto-Bismol faces, like these like Teletubby free-floating faces, and then I just pop them in a frame, and then I make. Sh I mean, you can't see that in this image, but I pop this in a frame, and then it's interesting. People like these. I did a whole bunch of these. I should still. I should start doing them again, selling them. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna start selling my work. But like I said, I got new stuff. But I. This is part of my hack work. I would just do these faces as exercises, you know. And um, that was how. That was how I stayed alive. Not only that, but you know, fed somebody else. I wasn't just feeding myself. Oh, and pets. Um, and but I had to do other shit. It was just painting. Believe you me. I was always multitasking. I was like a. I'd say I was like an artist odd jobber guy. <laughs> I was a one-man factory too. I was trying to get in all the trend, trends and crazes and all that stuff I saw in the early days of Juxtapose magazine. It's just some dude. I think it was a Russian dude. I'm not sure. Look at his face though. Doesn't he look like some kind of like vaguely crowdish type of guy? I do remember this guy, the guy. But um, yeah, this is one. I would call this my $25 painting because I did it however long it took. I didn't keep track not long. I would paint on masonite a lot because you have something that's hard, light, I could mail it if they were small. This was probably a smaller one. At some point I started doing 8x10 portraits or whatever was small that people could pop into a frame, an 8x10 frame, or I could do it myself. I'd get dollar. Let me tell you my how to make money as an artist, man. Oh, I'm not, I'm not even doing this episode right. I should have started there. Well, anyway, I'll start now because this is going to be like at least an hour long. Um, here's what I do, man. You get some. You go to your your Chinese slave labor stores, or any place you can get free or cheap frames, yard sales, people's garbage. 
get frames and then just get pieces of masonite for your Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever you can get pieces of masonite and then you cut that with a little jigsaw, invest in a jigsaw, it's, if you're an artist you may already have one. It's a worthwhile tool to get a, a jigsaw, if you don't feel safe enough just get a little handsaw thing or a cutting tool, use a mat knife, if you already have a mat knife you can use a mat knife to cut masonite and cut it into chunks. This is just like an 8 by 10 piece of masonite. I did a whole stack of these. Some of these paintings you've already seen. The janitor guy, the, the Russian street person, the pretty girl, the, the Asian guy. A bunch of the ones you've seen already that were just portraits. The face, that one, I'll go back to that one. The sun, this face, these are all 8 by 10s. All the ones I just said, those are all the 8 by 10 paintings I did. So I could pop them into some frames. Like sometimes I get nice frames, like hand carved wooden frames. Then I charge more for that. Thrift stores, yard sales, your parents' basement, anywhere where you can get frames for free or cheap as possible. I mean, I would do stuff where I would do like these brush drawings, which that's a whole other segment of art to show a different day. But I'd do these brush drawings, put them in dollar store frames. I'd go spend 20 bucks on dollar store frames and then pop these drawings or make them to fit the different frames, whatever the neatest, nicest frames I could give to people. And then put the drawing, painting, whatever in the frame. You could do this at your sidewalk fairs, at your any any place where you can have a booth or whatever. Just have it priced to sell and just don't be afraid to paint. If you want to get good, just keep doing it. Do bad paintings. Look at the eyes are wrong. I sold this. I got at least, I, I think this was like a $25 one. I would just put them at 25 bucks on up. Somebody would buy them. This one was at 18 by 24. Um, this guy's skin is green. There's a Jewish guy. Um, he had these really... I think I did capture something of this dude. I mean, it, to me it looks like a weird... Like, weird sailor. You know, it looks like juxtaposed lowbrow bullshit. Which is, but it was just me trying to get better. But I liked messing with people's skin color and stuff. So I made this dude green. Which it doesn't really show through my washed out colors. I said my colors are really cool. That's something I can I can boast about my use of color. It's, it's fucking cool. It's mine. I use it my way and people notice. But this guy had such soulful eyes, the real dude. I really tried to make that come through. But it's not this man. He, he really had, his eyes were something else. Um, this one was when I was like, okay, I'm just going to start doing some make em up shits. So I'll just do... Uh, you know, a little surreal, little... I forget how I sold this one. I, I think I just sold it as lowbrow art, outsider art, juxtapose art. Oh, categories to sell artwork if you want to sell it on eBay, Etsy, whatever, if you don't know this. Outsider art, lowbrow art, juxtapose. If you're doing the kind of shit you're seeing me do here, you want to get good at it. But you know your categories. If you're just painting still lifes of food, label it as such. This is a portrait when I shave my head. I look like shit. I was like a skeleton. I mean, uh, it's particularly low point in my health. Um, sold it. Sold this one. Sold that at a gallery show. I think it was. I think it was a gay guy bought it, and uh, I wonder where he hung it, or if he hung it. But he bought it. it. I have to admit there was something that doesn't come through. This this painting had a cool quality to it. In the light, I used glazed paints, and it had like a impasto effect, like like raised surface, like thick paints just. You know what I mean? Like I just painted it sloppy, and then I was like, I got it to this level, and I was like, stop. It reminds me, it's me, but what it reminds me of is the old, um, it looks like St. Stephen. If you look at those old, like really old things of St. Stephen, it looks like that guy. You know, that painting or whatever. But it's supposed to be a self-portrait of me, but it reminds me of those, I can't think of what you call it, type of art. Like the old early Christian art that were like mosaics or whatever. It's just like this flat, you know, almost Asian stuff. But it's not Asian, it was European. Anyway, this sold this. This one, when I took the picture, you can see it wasn't dry. So all I have of this one, this is a pretty cool painting. I wasn't done with it yet, but this was a picture. I, this is all I have of it. I sold this one like 250 bucks. I think I sold this one for. And yeah, yeah, 250 bucks. It wasn't even dry. That's the wet spots are all over the canvas. But like I said, uh, you really got to see it. It's one of those things you got to be there with my stuff. Or... You gotta actually let me just do a slideshow that lets you see. I'm gonna put slideshows up on my stuff too without me talking. I guess I'm just gonna put that up and let it be. I used to use a different name. I had a different fake name because, oh, I'll talk about that too. This is production art for something. They were gonna have 
guys wear black sclera lenses and they were looking for guys with these type of features, they're gonna paint them white. And they're these, sort of these like portal interdimensional traveler guys and there's production art for that. And that project's not happening and it's, that was years ago so I could talk about it. Like when you sign a non-disclosure thing, you can't talk about a thing. Or sometimes you can't talk about it until it comes out or never or you're not sure for how long. I'm gonna talk about this. <laughs> um, same thing, that's a pullback of the same painting. It, um, that was just to show there's basically like these guys in these white shirts with the ties and they like were like fiddlers of machines and in between planes of reality. It was a really cool idea. Um, this is like one of my like a take version of Jesus. I wanted to do this painting of Jesus as like a young guy but I also wanted to have all that weird juxtaposy shit like I don't know if you can see because the color's so washed out. He's got like blue in here. To me this reminds me of not like Francis Bacon but one of those type of asshole guys that would paint like that, um, oh, oh, what's the art movement? Fantastic realism, whatever. I'm thinking of, like, there's this painting of, I don't know, it reminds me of these creepy dudes like that, because I was kind of going for that, like, learning from that, doing this painting of Jesus. I think the next slide will be a pullback, I'm not sure. Yeah. So anyway, I sold that one. I got, I got, I kind of wish I still had this one. This one looks pretty great in person, and it started out, it didn't even start out as a portrait of Jesus. I, it started out as a painting of a kid, but it didn't look like the kid I'd painted. It was too mature, and the body was too big. So then I adultized it, and I thought, I'll make this young Jesus. So basically, I covered a kid's face with beard and hair stubble. And, you know, it was like a kind of bombed out stoner kid. Jesus. <laughs> and I put the hair out, changed the hair. I mean, the, the original kid had short hair. And I just like, uh, I, art, I like to call it Arthur Rackhaming. Arthur Rackham was the first artist that gave me the idea that you could have anybody as a model or a study to sit in front of you for a pose, to get drapery, the clothing, all that stuff, and just turn them into anything, a monster, a demon, uh, you could turn a man into a woman, whatever. Like if you understand anatomy enough, I studied these things enough that you, yeah, I know this doesn't show it, right? I know my flaws, but I'm not pointing them out. Oh, well, that's the other thing I said before. Don't point out your artist. Don't point out your flaws unless it's to your teacher after they've already pointed out your flaws and they didn't notice this or that. You can tell them stuff you don't like then. Just let people see what they say first. Don't fuck up selling a painting by saying, oh, it's great, but you don't have to self-deprecate. You know what's wrong with it. Be grateful. They like your stuff. You just say thank you. Be grateful. They're paying attention to your work, which is what you want. Would you rather make a living doing what you do or... Even if it's for somebody else, even if it's a portrait of rich assholes, which I tried to avoid. Um, but, you know what I mean? Like, uh, well, anyway, this one has blue skin. I, I, I didn't know what to title it. I titled it The Daughter of Thor because this is like a close up on a picture that was bigger. This picture, these little circles, they're kind of like the ones that the Jack Kirby Thor has on him. So I said it was Thor's daughter and I made her blue for some reason because there's a lot of this thing of with Hindu religions. I did a lot of paintings of blue people, which I know is interesting is the word Hindu, I think means black, like in old Indian. So the Hindus just was like, it meant the blacks. It meant like the dark skinned people. It was the religion of, some people say it like this, it's like a racist thing, but they're like, basically like the Indian people say like the Hindu, like in old ways was like, oh, those, those, uh, you know, those N words, those Hindus like that. So the blue skin gods, I don't think there was really ever blue skin gods. I think that story was about just like dark brothers, you know, like dark Indians that had, that started, that started Hinduism. They were dark, right? Dark skin. So dark, they were blue, you know, like you ever see like a, like a, like a dark skin black person that's so dark they look blue or purpley. Well, anyway, uh, I, I painted a lot of blue people and like, as like deity, I don't know, it just looks cool on cameras and people bought them. Anything that I re re recognize people bought with portraits when I was learning how to paint, I did more of. This one, I felt bad about this. I, I, I watched a girl, like a, a high school girl. This was in a show I had. I was, she paid $250 for this and I was like, oh, this is so shitty. But she liked it. This girl, I mean, I guess her parents had money that she could afford it. But she, the girl paid $250 for this one. And it's terrible. I mean, it looks way better the actual painting, again, like I said, I'm making excuses for my paintings, but you're watching me film it through a fucking gridded out video camera. There's detail to that other 
you know, like vaginal fear uh, painting. <laughs> Symbolists. That's what I was looking for. I think that my some of the stuff you'll see, the occult stuff, you can tell I was influenced by the symbolists whose names I can't remember. Richard Dad was the guy who had an influence on me until I realized he murdered somebody and got locked up. And his paintings he did as a, you know, as a locked up person. I was like, oh, fuck Richard Dad. And that's what I did with Van Gogh at some point and Picasso. I always had these grudges against my artist heroes. Like, not because I couldn't be as good as them or as good as Picasso or whatever, but because I read a biography of Picasso and somebody made a comment about him that I found to be appropriate, which was... That Picasso thought that he could get to some higher level of art, or some spiritual realms. And he's like, how could you create like higher art by taking art apart? He said he was always destroying things and deconstructing until you look at Picasso's art right up at the end. Where he's just doing like, um, you know, like ink drawings. And I kind of like Picasso's stuff towards the end, to be honest with you. Those weird, um, like orgies of like minotaurs. And he was like old and impotent, so he's doing like these weird... Uh, like ink drawings of fucking and prints and stuff like of, of orgies and stuff and you know when I was a younger guy I thought they were neat because he was so artful that he could just make scribbles and make them look cool but now I I used to resent him and didn't know why but now I understand why I don't like Picasso because um, he used to make women feel miserable and then pa did paintings of it like it's all fractured art like if you look at magazines and prescription drug art the, 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 the stuff in magazines and drug ads and stuff it's all influenced by Picasso and Monk because it's the art of the psychological it's the art of the psychologically disturbed now this is more like uh, Giger stuff or whatever you know but um, yeah how about that one I sold that one 250 bucks I think probably that was sold in the gallery um, yeah I don't know what the gallery things like now I'm kind of out of it but I think that I will have buyers for my stuff when I want to get back in but I'm trying to create the world where we get rid of the gallery owners. I mean, the whole modern art movement and MoMA and all that stuff, they're telling you what to like, and most of the people that go there don't like that shit. They, you have to go to art school to learn what art is. Like, if you ask somebody, like, what painting they like, they'll tell you it's a... a they like, oh, I like this picture of wildlife. Like, look at all the detail. They had to paint all the hairs on the koala bear's fur, the tiger, whatever. Or it's a drag... Somebody says, oh, this dragon's cool, right? Like, regular guy off the street. And like, oh, you don't understand art. Or somebody does a painting of their grandfather and somebody says, who's that? They say, oh, it's a cool painting. Who is that? And then it's a famous Chris Ware story. Chris Ware, he, he tells, is it, Chris Ware's an artist. He, he's a comic book guy. So Chris Ware's painting a picture of his grandfather and the people at Rhode Island School of Design or wherever the hell he went said, oh, hey, cool. Painting of an old man. How ironic. You're a young guy doing a picture of an old man. That's really good. Fantastic stuff. Who's the old man? And Chris Ware said, oh, it's my grandfather. They laughed at the guy. Because he was doing a picture, a lovingly rendered portrait of his grandfather. I thought, what a load of bullshit is that? So I always remembered that story, which was his story. That's why I got to give him credit for it. But I, I held on to that too because I saw similar things where art was appreciated. And then when the artist sincerely explained the intention or corrected the bullshitter who read a bullshit theory about it and said, no, it's not about that bullshit thing you said. My artwork's about this. Then that per then the artist was dismissed for the creation, for explain for ha for explaining it to the art school, you know, douchebag. You have to go to, not everybody goes to art school as a douchebag, but do you realize that art school is a conditioning that teaches you how to think and a lot of times doesn't even teach you how to paint or draw. It just says, here's the concepts or I of ideas how to think about art. And then those kids who want to develop draftsmanship have to seek out those teachers. At least that's how it was for me. And that was like over 25 years ago. I had to seek out teachers that had draftsmanship skills, which were becoming a dying thing when I went to college. I mean, it's obviously not the case now. But I had to seek out guys who actually had those skills and learn from them. Because a lot of the other teachers that I had first semester were just like, do whatever you want, and art is this, and art is that. But we're not going to show you how to do it because... How could I tell you how to do this thing that's anything that you think it is? And it sucks to think that, considered the current political climate and what's going on college campuses, I have no idea what art students are learning now. But what I do see is a young generation of amazing, fantastic artists that were better than the artists that were... I mean, maybe it's just because the internet and you can see what's available worldwide. But it seems like now there's been an explosion globally of artists way better than before. And I'm not talking about people using computer manipulations. I'm talking about hands-on 
fantastic painters and sculptors. I see this stuff. Like I, I, I used to go to museums and shows and see stuff. And I mean, like a lot of the great stuff was unfortunately like the the great draftsmen now are doing concept work and fantasy art stuff. Like they're working on production art and stuff for movies that gets turned into CGI bullshit. Again, stuff done by other artists, other fantastic artists who work in slave way to create your CGI demons and monsters and gods and goddesses and superheroes. It's like, you don't even know who these people are and they're creating all this fantastic stuff. And here I am, a hack, a piece of shit bullshit artist getting by on weird Crowley, you know, or symbolist type throwback 70s, well not 70s, what am I saying? <laughs> throwback stuff. Um, 1920s? Whatever. Anyway, uh, and just throwing stuff together and people like it. But H.R. Giger said it made an interesting statement, which I'll throw in here because this is sort of Giger influenced, I would be supposed. Or more, I saw Giger stuff and I learned about Crowley and Symbolist and all that stuff through. I learned what Giger's influences were and then I sort of got to this kind of stuff. But. Um, what did I want to say about Giger? Oh yeah, he said, I, I, he said, I don't know who buys my paintings. He said, they are horrible. He said, I would never want to eat in the home. It's probably a YouTube clip of it. I, that's what I, I saw some kind of clip. I saw a documentary on him and he said, I would never want to eat dinner in the home of anyone who would have my paintings in their house. And Giger's a creepy guy. I don't think I am a creepy guy. I think I was faking it, but pretty well. Like, look at this one right again the colors are pretty cool but you're losing something like there's a weird bloody period blood red sky you know here's the cotyledon, lead on vagina seed thing opening the ring third eye opening but it's all very grim it's all very like ugh. somebody bought this i don't know how much they paid for it but i mean i i'm appreciate I, I appreciate my patrons i'm glad everybody bought my art but i have to admit which you'll see in other videos i do about art i had this really cynical period where i made a substantial sum of money anytime I needed to whenever I wanted doing like these shit paintings which is just it's like the, about the degrading of society that's why I'm saving it for another video I made money off of that and this is just me trying to make creepy shit and look weird you know and here I'm trying to do like Santa and the seven hills seven valleys you can't see all seven of them in this washed out painting but I was trying to put all kinds of you know unusual occultism like me saying that, the Seven Hills, Seven Valleys, Sanen, Switzerland, all that stuff, that's not something even occultists usually talk about. This sort of a, I mean, maybe they do, but anyway, that's that's a, that's for nerds. Uh, and then here's like, um, before I was finished, before I put in all the other stuff. And again, the weird alien figure, like a lamb type of figure, uh, Crowley, all this shit is so fucking old. Uh, forgive me for cursing. It's so old. Oh, production art. This is a close-up of a being. These almost got made. These almost got made. Uh, these were budgeted and everything. These were going to be like sort of uh, on a on a filament wire or like on a, on a wire that was going to be digitally taken out. They were going to be huge. Like here's, you know, human-sized men. These are going to be huge empty things. It was basically just a shell. And they would be on a stick like on a, like, like I think of dark, dark crystal, but way simpler. These huge things in Grim Reaper shrouds, but they're fat. And they had these little... I don't know, look, what I designed them based on was like, um, like goat, like hooved, like hooved the animals, but I made them more like deer, deer things, like deer claws. I did more detailed artwork for it, but this is, again, this is part of that project for the other thing I talked about before, that this is all part of the same project, never got made. I don't know, maybe it'll still get made someday. It had, it had neat imagery, right? But I was a designer, so I came up with this shit, the vagina face monsters, Cthulhu, HP Lovecraft, the color scheme, the lighting is going to be all purpley blood growth because purple the the, pur the mob zone kenneth grant all that stuff anyway these 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 little claws were slashing you'll see more of these my production design for this stuff in illustration work but anyway it would these big fat things would slash slash at a human and that's the scale so they're big hollow empty things that didn't weigh anything but you could also they were going to be put hooked onto the back actually hooked onto a tow truck and then the tow truck would drive and these things will be flying in the air, floating, and the person will run away from it in the nighttime. It, it's so cool. It could still totally work um, to see those things in action. Have, have one of these things chasing a person, you know, in a, in a movie. Not a cartoon, like an actual movie. And it's lightweight and everything, so you could, 
is like on a pole connected to a tow truck or the back of a pickup or whatever and then you know hanging basically hanging from a fishing wire like bait like a carrot on a stick there on with it anyway <laughs> dead bodies back there in this weird other dimension this thing these things were there to get rid of people that didn't belong and these things would like grim reapers of this other dimension and it was killing all the men that didn't belong there i think that's a head you'll see so anyway there's some more of the carnage this is very this is like production art stuff so it's very sloppy i can draw a better human than that these are all the guys in the team that didn't make it see how it slashed open their guts in the middle um there it is again i'm trying to think of how many years ago this is this is pretty way back but anyway you see there's the whole thing it was this like a warehouse room which is where you could make blood make a big mess and get blood everywhere this thing could be on a wire which is why you see how they float i didn't even mention it before because you couldn't see it in any of the other images in any of the other images but this thing would have been on a wire and uh, i don't know how much it would have weighed or how they could have got the weight down but it would have been on a stick off camera and then the stick would have been you know what i mean just have it hover around and um, I don't know how they're going to make it animated. It could have been marionette and just take out the wires digitally. Oh, I think it could work. It could be so cool. A big gory puppet. Um, probably easy to digitally make this thing, but that wasn't what they were doing. This is all practical. Um, well, digital was just going to take stuff away. I think I made this. It's just 18 by 24. I would go to the, you know, the the big box art stores, AC Moore, Hobby Lobby, whatever your part of the country has. And I would um, and he'd get the coupons, artist tip again, get your coupons out of the weekly paper. Maybe it's worth it on a Sunday to get the Sunday paper, to get all the circulars and sales papers, and clip the one. Every week, everywhere I've lived in America, I've been able to clip out the 50% off, 40% off coupon at the art supply store. There's a huge markup in art supplies. So if you save coupons or everybody you know that gets newspapers still, Ask them for their art supply store because they don't give a fuck about it. They don't. They don't get art supplies. Sorry for cursing. They don't get art supplies, so you can just get them. Get all their circulars. Uh, I even went so far as I I, I used to live down the street from uh, a little sh stop and shop place, and after the newspapers that they were going to send back anyway didn't sell, I said, "Can I get all the ones from AC Moore? From can I get all the ones from the Hobby Lobby or whatever that? What's that chain? Hobby Lobby. Can I get all the Hobby Lobby ones and take them? And I would just clip the the coupons out now they never they wouldn't let me use seven coupons at a time because it's crazy but i could come back multiple times in a week if i needed supplies and every time i went to the art supply store i'd have a 40 percent off 50 percent off coupon for something sometimes i'd use it on canvases i heard the canvases are made as slave labor when they go to like those big box art supply stores i don't know what the truth is of that but it, to me they look manufactured it doesn't look like slave labor at all it looks like machines do it or something because I, I don't know, what, but anyway, I didn't know that then. But what I did, you have to decide your own ethics. But what I did was I would just buy stacks of those canvases. And if I had a show or something, and I couldn't make a canvas or didn't have, I wasn't using Mace Knight or any other stuff I mentioned, uh, I could go get like a seventy, eighty dollar canvas, the biggest one they had at the big chain box, Dick Blicks, whatever, big chain art supply stores. And um, I'm trying to think all the different catalogs. There's so many places that come and go for the places I've lived. They're probably only regional or local. But anyway, you just go to whatever your local big box art supply store, if you have one in your area, is with those coupons. And it really helps you save money. Like for shows, like if I was in like a juried exhibition or I got into a group show or whatever, I had like a big thing, I could go get like a big canvas you know, use that 50% off coupon sometimes. And sometimes you could get more, you know, like, you know, whatever deal or whatever. And I'm like, oh boy, you know, get like a, let's say $80 canvas for like, um, well, you know, half price. So it was a cool thing to be able to do. Uh, still something you can do to this day. I just don't do it as much because uh, my art's taking a different turn. But yeah, anytime I need art supply stuff, it's so easy to, to take care of that one and save money. Yeah, sold it. I did a series of ones like this. It was like, I know people like skull stuff and weird stuff. So I just did a bunch of these where I just played with color. This is all painted in neons, which looks great under a black light. This is a totally denebriation nation colored thing. But I just put whatever, you know, the X, the I, just throw some occult imagery, all the stuff that was in the background of my life. Throw some symbolism shit in there with skulls. Actually, I... I did another version of the same painting that was way, way better than this one that you're seeing here. But I don't, I don't even have a copy of it anymore. 
somewhere maybe I do. This one, just again, study limited palette. I didn't quite have Rembrandt's palette because I was poor. So I used a version of that. And again, you're losing so much. There's so much you can't see that I, work I put into it. And it wasn't even dry. All this here is wet. The painting was still wet when I photographed it. He has a companion. I did a male and female to do as a set, a set of them. So I, I think I called him like Ghost Guy or something. He looks like some kind of weird Crowleyan gray being or whatever. Some kind of Marina Abramovic juxtapose bullshit. I don't know. There's the ghost girl. Yeah, she's cute. That's somebody. Um, she didn't really look like this and she wasn't an albino. <laughs> but, <clears throat> yeah. Tall and thin, taller to me. Um, ghost girl. Yeah, I always liked this one. I When I did this one, I kept it for a while. Not because I had a crush on a girl or anything. I didn't like her personality, really. But I, um, I liked the painting. This was so fast. This is basically a study. And you can't even see how cool it is on here. It's like totally washed out. But this one really came out good. And um, I had to include it because I like it. But it doesn't really show good here, I don't think. Three colors that I limited my palette. It was white black and red actually four colors white black red and yellow ochre no not yellow ochre naples white that's what it was this was four different colors naples white red black you don't care anyway i was trying to do like old color old uh, magazines i was really impressed upon by the way old magazine printing processes worked where you would you would see um different colors uh, like they would, use, I mean, sorry, you'd only see three different colors, and they would blend those three different colors to make like a masterpiece. So I was just trying to do like you know, fuck around with paints and, and and do something like that. But I did another painting with this same study, but this one I stopped when I got to this point. This is basically a uh, like, oh, I'm done. I like this like this, and I just wanted to stop because in real life, uh, I'm bummed that I actually sold it, but I needed money and I got a pretty penny for it, so I'm happy with it. You know, it's like to do something that takes to do something that takes like two and a half hours and get 250 bucks is pretty cool. Uh, this one sold it a long time ago. Um, this is me just learning stuff, trying out different color palettes. Like I had this idea of Rembrandt's palette, but instead of the brown, I would substitute dioxin purple, I think it was. And again, this wasn't even dry <laughs> when I took the picture. Um, this one was an early one, quick, small, easy to pop an 8x10 frame. Um, four colors. I used sometimes the color palette was determined by what paints I had left. Ooh, here's some more occult stuff. I think we're also heading in towards the end of the slideshow, which would be cool. Um, this one is uh, just trying to be weird with it. There's all kinds of stuff going on. I'll zoom out. Yeah, sold this one. I think I sold this one at a Halloween show. I was in a group Halloween show. And they said, hey, if you want to submit more stuff, go ahead. You know, so I just submitted a bunch. I think I had 11 paintings in this show. They just let me. They're a really cool gallery. I wish it still existed. I liked the people that owned it. I liked the people that ran the gallery. They were a fun art. They were like a pop art gallery or whatever. But, you know, whatever. RIP a Pop Mart is pretty neat. But I was too shy back then. I couldn't even talk to people. I had a show there and everything. I just totally botched it. And I got hammered. And I just was like, I want to go home. Um, you live, you learn. I was younger. Um, yeah, creepy stuff, right? I was just trying to be creepy, just trying to fill the canvas, just trying to learn stuff, trying to do planes, like, okay, different layers of people. It still looks kind of flat, but there's more to this painting that I'm showing. I kind of have it cropped, but that's what I have for this slideshow, so, eh, whatever. Yucky, huh? And then here, boom, it started out as this. This is actually the first. I started out here. And I thought, okay, I could be done with this and try to sell it. And I did try to sell it. Nobody bought it. So then I added this. So I just kept adding shit to it. I gave them weird little mustaches. It doesn't mean anything. But I just wanted to make it look creepy and disturbing so somebody would buy it. And they did. When I made it look like this, they bought it. It went into a gallery show and somebody bought it. I don't know what they did with it, but they paid for it. And they paid 250 bucks for it. And this is what I couldn't sell. <laughs> Actually, this one, this one reminds me of a Steve Bissett image in Taboo where he did a painting of like bodies from the Holocaust or something. And it reminds me of that. And I kind of think that that may have informed my developing sensibilities that when I painted this, subconsciously I had that Steve Bissett, Bissett painting from the back cover of Taboo in my mind. 
Um, more creepy stuff. Ooh, this one. Uh, I sold this one eventually, but this was one where I had a couple paintings. Remember that one with those vagina face guys? It was a bunch of like um, black clansmen with the black shrouded guys with vagina faces and vagina eyes. Yeah, that was a painting. That painting, maybe I'll have time to go back to it. Um, that painting is one I sold a couple of times, but the owners, like, they bought it and then didn't take it. And then I, you know what I mean? It was like people wanted it, bought it, but were too creeped out. They're like, yeah, they always gave me the same answer. Three times this happened, and once was with a gallery, where they were like, yeah, somebody bought it, but then they were like, yeah, they changed their mind. And I was like, okay. So people didn't want that painting for some reason. Eventually I got rid of it. This painting you're looking at now, though, it's another one of those paintings where, uh, this is my, like, weird idea of, like, a, like, hollow dead family, like, some kind of weird future, you know, like, bad thing. It's just me just trying out to do translucence. I was trying to learn something about layers and translucence, so I made these weird, you know, like, alien things that have the hues of a man but couldn't possibly be that. And I titled it as a family, gave it some kind of weird, creepy painting as like the other family or something like that or your other family or whatever and I sold it eventually but this is one that I tried to sell a couple times and the, the buyers just didn't come through so I'm like okay sell it again um, this one sold easy this is an 8x10 type of one where I just popped into a small frame sold it this is a, a just messing around with oils and a light source this is me trying to learn how to paint light from coming from under and I sold it my learning. <laughs> a lot of paintings, I learned this from another guy uh, when he was in college at the end of the semester. The kids that don't care about art throw all their canvases and shit away. So he would just go to the dumpster and it was me, him, and a couple other guys. We just take all the canvases out and just we'll paint over this shit. We'll paint stuff and get good. You know, like we'll paint better things over top of this stuff that they don't care about. And, you know, this one, again, just trying to get tricky with it. I got a decent chunk of change for this one, I think. Um, I know I sold it. All the stuff got sold. I don't own any of it anymore. If I own any, any of it anymore, I'll tell you. But this was just, um, I think I was learning something about light coming through or whatever. Limited palette for sure. This is, again, my four color thing of black, white, red, and Naples yellow. Which registers weird, but that's what it was. Um, you know, the eye, the head, the brain, all this stuff. Anyway... Again, there's a close-up of a painting. The Star Man. This one I sold too. I wish I still had it. I think I got at least 250 bucks for this one. Um, there's more detail. I'm going to pull back again. Boom. Uh, yeah, that one I, I think I used as a postcard for a gallery show. I think that's the end of my slideshow as well. And I'll end it at that. I'm also just, I think I'm just going to throw up a slideshow. I didn't want to throw up my old slideshow because it didn't have the art the way I wanted it. But I think I'm just going to throw it up anyway. And like a, b a bunch of slideshows, and I'll do ones with commentary like this. But for now, I think I'm going to end it on this one. My big painting of a star. I use as my postcard advertising uh, art show. It looked really neat. I still have a stack of them. I don't know what the hell to do with them. It's just bookmarks. I should throw them away. Ego. Pure ego. But anyway, there I go. I showed you some of my occult, occult bullshit. Uh, it's not even, it's not even like, it's, it's nothing you saw here. There's so much shitty stuff. There's so I have so much stuff like this. 20, 25, 25 plus years of stuff like this. 25, you know, illustration work. I'm going to do different slideshows and things like that where I talk over top of it in shitty quality because I like to do it cheap and easy and free and just point the camera and talk so the sound quality is good and the image is good enough. This is old art. It doesn't need to be seen so great, other than it doesn't make me look so good, but I don't mind because it's not how I want to be seen anyway. But I will own up to it. And all of it's out there in the world. And so much more you haven't even seen. It's all out there. People bought it. I don't know what they're doing with it, but I'm out there, man, in the world. Strange thing. Uh, but I gave a lot of advice. I hope it was useful. Try it out. See if it works or not. This episode. Enjoy it. I don't know. That's episode.